Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video we have my Game Week 24 deadline decisions. This is a weekly series where I take you through your final questions and dilemmas ahead of the upcoming deadline. If you do get any use out of today's video and you enjoy it, please do smash that like button and if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe as well. But without further ado, let's jump into it. I think in general, being a content creator can be very difficult because trying to predict the future is very, very difficult, especially in football. It's traditionally a very difficult sport to predict, especially the Premier League this season. But I think Game Week 24 in particular, there are lots of difficult decisions because of the upcoming blanks and doubles, because everyone's team is different. And in a lot of positions, we are forcing good players out of our team for other good players due to trying to play the fixtures. And the first set of questions are around that, right? We already own probably three very good forwards. I think a lot of people at the moment are sat there with like Harlan Watkins Solanke or even Alvarez Watkins Solanke. And Watkins and Solanke in particular are two excellent FPO assets. And you would have to say, all things considered, if the fixtures were equal, you could make an argument that both Watkins and Solanke are in the best front three in FPL. But a lot of people are sat there thinking, let's say you've got Watkins and Solanke, we'll ignore your third striker at the moment, maybe it is a Haaland. And you're thinking... Is it worth selling Watkins or Solanke to bring in Darwin? If so, which of the two would you sell? And what about if it's for a hit? Because straight away, if you sell Watkins or Solanke for Darwin, yes, you're getting the double in 25 and a great fixture this week for Darwin. But remember, Darwin blanks in game at 26. So if you're selling either of them this week for dying for a hit, you're also almost definitely going to have to take him out in 26, probably for Watkins or Solanke again, and it may well be for a hit again. So what you may be left looking at is, is it worth bringing in Darwin for a hit this week when you're probably going to sell him for a hit once again in 26 or filled only 10 players? It is very difficult, and I think Darwin is a very specific taste in FPL. Lots of people will like him because his data's good, he gets the chances, and there's a lot of chaos with him. He's got a very high ceiling. I still maintain, and I, to be honest, I've been saying this for 18 months now, but I still maintain one of these days Darwin is going to get like a 23-plus pointer. I, I genuinely think there will be a game when he just goes ridiculously crazy because we've seen he can get five, six, seven big chances in a single game, which not many players in Premier League history can. So... It is a very specific taste. It's very difficult to own Darwin because you can also get a red card, an own goal, a, a missed penalty as we've seen, hitting the woodwork four times. So the first thing is, and a lot of people won't even discuss this part, the emotional aspect of are you willing to own Darwin? Because it's not easy. If you are... And you are also someone that likes taking risks in FPL. And I'm going to refer to management style a lot throughout this video because it does depend what sort of manager you are. I would be willing, yes, to sell either Watkins or Solanke for a hit for Darwin. But that's due to the way that I play FPL. I like taking risks. I like players that get lots of chances. And I am chasing that incredibly high ceiling. I know Watkins has just delivered an 18-pointer, but I would have to say that Darwin has a much higher ceiling than both of these players because he gets that quantity of chances. So yes, I would do it, but you need to think about your own management style. When it comes down to Watkins or Solanke, I think you can look at this two ways, right? You are going to want Solanke for double game with 28. And if you've missed the news, Bournemouth double, a very, very nice double, by the way, in game week 28. So you will want Solanke in 28. And we now have the news that Watkins will have a fixture in blank game week 29. So if we simplify it, you are going to want Solanke in 28 and Watkins in 29. So you're going to want both of these guys back. But if you are still willing to sell them for Darwin, I then think it comes down to before a round game week 28, who do you see getting the most points? And for me, when you look at the fixtures and you also look at the way that these two players are playing, I think that the upside is there with Watkins, especially as again, given the fixtures. I would also argue that potentially in game week 26, Watkins could be a captaincy shout, where obviously Solanke plays against Manchester City. So when I just look at the fixtures and also the possibility that you could maybe even captain Watkins in one of the upcoming weeks, I think I would rather own Watkins than Solanke. But yes, you are going to want Solanke back for 28, but you're also going to want Watkins back. So I don't think it's a position where you say now, I've seen a lot of people say, well, you can't sell Solanke now. Well, you can, you just have to bring him back in. And you're going to have to sell Darwin anyway. So I think if you're committing to bringing Darwin in, you're committing to selling him. And therefore you can bring these two players back in. So I'm going to keep it relatively simple and say, in my personal opinion, with my management style, I would be happy selling Watkins and Solanke. I'd be tempted to do it for a hit still, and I would be more willing to sell Solanke than Watkins. But by all means, if you're more risk averse or you're just not convinced by Darwin, keep Watkins and Solanke. They are both brilliant assets and they could do very well. They could comfortably outscore Darwin because, yes, Darwin's got Burnley, Brentford, Luton, which have an incredibly high ceiling. However, 
is Darwin even going to start all three? Probably slash potentially not. He may well miss one of those games. And if so, you've got the same amount of fixtures with Watkins as Lange. And also they don't blank in 26. So I definitely don't think it's a, it's a must. But for me, I would do it. The next question was around Alvarez. Is Alvarez a hold or a sell now based on what we currently know? I still think I would lean towards selling him simply because even though we've now seen that they can play all of their stars in one team with Foden on the left, Alvarez on the right, and De Bruyne, Haaland, and uh, Alvarez through the middle, right? We've seen that Alvarez can still play. You would still predict that his minutes will be a lot lower now, given that Haaland and De Bruyne are fit enough to play 90 minutes. I just can't see Alvarez getting a significant amount of minutes now, but will he still start games? Absolutely. Does he still have a double? Yes. And would you expect him to start one of the games in the double once again? Yes. But when you're looking at, I would predict if you're selling Alvarez, it's for either Darwin or Haaland. I would predict Darwin's minutes will be slightly better. I think his doubles better. I think his fixture this week is better. And I think his ceiling is higher. And with Haaland, he's just such a better asset than Alvarez, isn't he? So yes, I would still be willing to sell Alvarez. But if you're in a position where you've got another striker that you're happy to sell, maybe a Jao Pedro sat in your team or another player in there that you're not as convinced by or you're happy to sell a Selanke, you could still hold on to Alvarez. So it's almost, a, I wouldn't mind selling him, but I don't think you need to force him out. The final question was around who are the best front three to own at the moment. Again, this really depends on your strategy. When are you looking to free hit to wildcard? I would have Haaland and I would have Darwin because they both double in 25. They've got a really good fixture this week as well. And I just think they have very high ceilings. That third forward for me, would be between Watkins and Tony, in my personal opinion. You could have a shout for an Adebayo, a Solanke, uh, an Alvarez. There are other players that are probably not even discussed here. If you're trying to optimize for the doubles, it's Tony. If you're trying to own one of the best forwards and players in FPL at the moment, on a decent run as well, he scored recently quite a few goals, or he's got at least a few returns, and with good fixtures, I kind of think I would have Ollie Watkins. So for me, the best front three to own, and it is no surprise that this is my front three, maybe a little bit of bias there, is Watkins, Darwin, and Haaland. But again, it comes down to your risk appetite, how much you want to attack the doubles, and what your team looks like for blank game at 26. So that's what I think about the forwards. Let's move on to the next section. I'm going to try not to repeat information in this video because I know I sometimes do that. So I know I've just discussed Darwin in a little bit of detail here, but let's just discuss Liverpool more generally and some of the other questions as well. You've also got the Liverpool fixtures on your screen right here, which is obviously Burnley this week, Brentford and Luton in 25, a blank in 26, which is obviously very difficult to navigate. Liverpool blank along with Luton, Chelsea and Spurs, of which we may own a few assets already. They've then got a pretty nice fixture in 27 of Forest away, but then it's City in 28, and they have about an 80 to 90% chance of blanking in 29. So if we go with the very high likelihood that they blank in 29, it is two brilliant game weeks, a blank, an okay slash pretty good game week, a very difficult fixture, and then a blank. Having two blanks in City in the space of four weeks after 24 and 25 kind of answers the first question of, are Liverpool assets essential? Absolutely not, especially if you are already struggling with 26 and you don't want to play a chip in and around that game week. I don't think you need to break your team to get them in. All you need really is Liverpool to not go too massive against Burnley and then both Darwin and Jota to get limited minutes in either Brentford or Luton. And that could happen. Let's say Liverpool only wins 2-0 against Burnley and then, I don't know, Darwin gets his rest against Brentford and Jota gets a rest against Luton. I could see that happening. And then in that position, unless they go absolutely ballistic in the game that they play in the double, you're probably looking at, yes, Darwin and Jota are very likely to return in these three games. But as long as they don't go too big, you're probably not in too bad of a position. And obviously, I say obviously, but sometimes we forget this. It's not just you don't own Darwin or Jota or the defenders that you're looking at. You own players instead of them. So not only do you just not need Darwin and Jota to go too mad, you also need the players that you have instead to just do something. If Ollie Watkins gets one goal and you decide not to do Darwin to Watkins, well, Darwin's got to get two goals to massively outscore him. So... All you need is the likes of Darwin and Solanke to do very well, or if it's a Bowen in midfield that you may be not sure about moving to Jota, and then you're in a, you're laughing, you're in a very, very good position. So no, Liverpool assets aren't essential. And even the defenders, I do think Van Dijk, Trent Allison could do very well. But apart from that Burnley at home fixture, Brentford away isn't great from a defensive perspective, especially now that Tony's back. And Luton have been scoring goals for fun at the moment. I mean, they scored four against Newcastle. They've scored three against Arsenal early in the season. So they can score goals. So I don't see... I wouldn't say that it's obvious that there will be two or three clean sheets here, but could you see it? Of course you could. It really, again, depends on how much you want to bank on Liverpool doing very well in these three. The next question was, if I want Jota, should I do it this week for a hit or next week for free? I kind of discussed bringing in Darwin for a hit. 
The reason that I am keen on doing it for a hit this week and rushing it forward into 24 and not waiting a week is I think the best fixture of the three is Burnley at home. And I feel like if you don't do it this week and you do it next week, yes, you still get the double, but there is a small chance slash reasonable chance that Darwin and or Jota miss one of Brentford and Luton. And the only fixture that I would feel relatively confident of one, Liverpool scoring lots of goals and two, both Darwin and Jota starting and to some extent even Trent, who I think is a bit of a doubt for the, one of the games in the double, is that Burnley at home game. Because it looks like Salah's probably not going to be available. And they've had a, a very decent rest between their most recent game and the Burnley game. I would be extremely shocked if, if Darwin and Jota don't both start Burnley at home and get good minutes. The real worry for them is either the Brentford game or the Luton game. Because that comes a few days before their EFL Cup final. So yes, I would be happy to do Jota in for a hit and or Darwin in for a hit. And I would be much more willing to do it this week because I feel like that real banker fixture, and it always doesn't always play out like this. Like I said, Burnley could just turn up in this game, but the real banker fixture here for me is the Burnley game. So I almost feel like it doesn't make sense to wait a week for Liverpool assets. If I was bringing in a Liverpool asset, which I think I am, and we'll discuss my team at the end, I, I would do it this week in 24. I did an entire 10 minute section in the Game Week preview video around whether I prefer Jota or Darwin. The short answer, if you don't want all of the in-depth stats, is I think they are both fantastic. I will probably own both of them for Game Week 24. The benefits that Jota has is I think he's a better finisher. He gets an extra point for a clean sheet and an extra point for a goal. But the benefits that Darwin has is that he has double the goal threat of Jota. He is getting double the XG that Jota has this season. And he's getting over double the amount of big chances that Jota is as well. So Darwin will get a much higher quantity of chances. And therefore, if Darwin takes them, I think Darwin blows Jota out of the water. I also think that Darwin's minutes are ever so slightly more secure than Jota's, but I think that's very close as well. So I think they're absolutely fine assets. I think Jota benefits from his clinicalness and the position that he's playing, but I think Darwin has the higher ceiling of the two. Hopefully that answers all of your questions around Liverpool. And just to note, again, I think Van Dijk and Alisson are great. I wouldn't be looking to bring in Trent now because whilst I think Trent plays Burnley, I think there is a good chance he misses that Luton at home game. And maybe if Connor Bradley's ready then, he may sit in for that game to allow Trent to play the final. I just think with the way that Bradley's been playing, I think he's an absolutely fine deputy for Trent. And I think we could see a little bit more rotation for Trent. So if I'm ranking the Liverpool assets, Darwin, Jota, Van Dijk, Alisson, Trent, something like that. So another team that rightly so are getting a lot of attention this week are Luton. And there were a few questions around Luton. They seem to be dividing opinions at the moment. I'd love to know down below what you think about Luton assets. I am probably somewhere in the middle. It seems to be a lot like Marmite at the moment. You either get people that are like all aboard the Luton train. And I'm talking about FPL Harry there. If you know, you know. But then there are also people that like Luton are terrible. I'm probably somewhere in the middle. But let me explain why they are so polarizing at the moment. And obviously the top question there is why are Luton assets being so overhyped? They blank in 26. And the person that asked that question, you're absolutely right. They do blank in 26. And that does provide an issue for a lot of people. But the, the thing about Luton is in the surrounding game weeks and the other game weeks where you need them, they they look really, really good. So this week they play against Sheffield United at home, which is arguably the best fixture in the Premier League at the moment. And Luton are playing very well and Sheffield United aren't. So that looks like a real banker for goals and the possibility of a clean sheet. They then do double in 25. But yes, it is a very difficult double. Manchester United at home could be a game where we see them do relatively well. But Liverpool away is one of the most difficult fixtures in the Premier League. Could you still see them scoring goals? Absolutely. And therefore, whilst it isn't a great double, I still don't mind playing a Luton asset in that double. They then blank in 26, which does create an issue for those of us like myself. Like I already own like two Liverpool. I've already got two City. Um, sorry, two Liverpool. I've got two Spurs and I've got one Chelsea. And there may be some other issues in my team. I'm already looking at having like, let's say five or six players that are blanking in game week 26. Adding another two players from Luton that are also blanking in 26 does create a bit of a headache for you. So the first and most notable thing that you need to think about is how bad does your team already look for 26? And if it is looking pretty poor, I'm not sure going out there and adding multiple Luton assets is a great idea. But the reason that they then become so valuable is after that, they don't have a great fixture in 27, but it is a home game against Villa. They then have a really nice double in 28 of Crystal Palace away and Bournemouth away. I would argue that you probably do still want one, two, or maybe even three Luton assets for that. And at the time of recording, they are more likely than not to have a fixture in blank game week 29. And it's Nottingham Forest at home, which is a really nice fixture. 
If we want them to play in 29, the things that need to happen is Luton need to lose to Man City in the cup and Forest need to lose to Manchester United in the cup. As long as those two teams do lose, Forest and Luton, then there will be a fixture in game week 29 of Luton versus Forest. So let's say at the moment that that does go ahead. They've got a great fixture this week, a double in 25, a double in 28, and a fixture in the biggest blank game week of the season. You can now imagine that having loot and assets is very valuable if you can get through blank game week 26. So I think fixtures wise, they are not being overhyped. I think they are being correctly hyped. Again, as long as you can get through 26. There was also a question around Doughty. Is Doughty even a good option, right? He could get an assist against Man United and get thrashed by Liverpool for a two-pointer. I guess the point being, even if you see him get something against United, if he concedes four goals against Liverpool, which we're probably saying is possible slash likely, then he's going to get minus two points there. So gets a yellow card in there as well. Even if he gets an attacking return, he's probably not coming away with much. And I kind of agree with the sentiment here. But you can say that about any play. You can say, what happens if Darwin blanks, right? So you can you can create that narrative around anyone. I suppose the point being that it's not a great double in 25. And I would emphasize here, if you're bringing in Luton assets just for double game at 25, you, you're doing it all wrong. What you're bringing in Luton assets for is a great fixture this week. Yes, two fixtures in 25, but then a great double in 28 and a, fi a possible fixture in blank game at 29. That's what you're bringing them in for. You need to in consider it in its entirety. You're not just looking at 25. I mean, you can even bench them in 25 if you want to. 25 isn't the real drawing point for me for Luton assets. Another question was around Barkley and Adebayo, obviously getting a lot of attention due to a lot of returns recently. Are they options? The, the, the short answer is yes, of course they are. I am a lot keener on Adebayo than I am Barkley because I'm a data-driven manager. You should know this if you've watched my videos for a while. And in the Game Week preview video, I spoke about Barkley and Adebayo's data in a bit more detail. Barkley's data is very, very poor this season. Even in more recent game weeks, it's still not fantastic because for the most part, he is playing a deeper role for Luton than we've seen in his career in the past. And yes, at points, he looks almost box to box, but he's certainly not playing like an advanced midfielder. And therefore, I think whilst you could get returns over this spell and you could definitely do a lot worse than Barkley, I would need the data to be a hell of a lot better. I would need to see him getting clear cut chances. He's been taking loads of shots recently, but he's actually not had any or many shots in the box in that time either. So I kind of feel like Barkley is fine. He's a real pun. And with the fixtures, I mean, Sheffield United at home, he could definitely get something. That, that double in 28 looks really, really nice. And he's also not taken a valuable forward spot. Like I said, it's kind of flipped at the moment. The forward spots are very valuable. So yeah, Barkley's fine, but he's not for me. He's not my sort of pick. Adebayo actually has slightly better data. He's got really decent goal threat and he's obviously very cheap too. So I, I prefer Adebayo, but of course he takes a very valuable forward spot. We've just spoken about all of the brilliant forwards that you can own. Tony, Watkins, Solanke, Haaland, Alvarez, Darwin. Where does Adebayo fit in? I think it's only if you're really struggling for money. So I'm going to leave it there for loot and assets. The fixtures are brilliant if you can deal with 26. I think Doughty, Barkley, Adebayo, and also Kaminsky are really, really good options. Kaminsky obviously gets around the issue of 26, assuming you can partner him with someone like an Areola, because then you still have a goalkeeper for 26. So Kaminsky is probably the best pick on paper if we're looking at fixtures, but I think Doughty and Adebayo would be the other two I'd be looking at. So lots of people looking at their transfers this week and thinking, yes, I want to bring in double game week players, but I also want to get one step ahead and also think about blank game week 26. And I am in this very specific situation as well, because as I said throughout this video, I've currently got five players blanking in 26, and I'm currently looking at bringing in another Liverpool asset. And therefore, if I don't start selling some of the other players that blank in 26, I could be left in a very tricky position. And the teams that we're starting to look towards now are Chelsea and Spurs, because they blank in 26, but there is no double upcoming for them. And so there are some questions this week about, is it worth selling the likes of Palmer, Porro and Richarlison? Or is it maybe one week early? And the reason a lot of people are saying one week early is, I mean, Spurs have a really decent fixture this week against Brighton at home. And Palmer in particular has Crystal Palace away. Crystal Palace are without Eze, Elise and Gehi, who in my opinion are their three best players. So it looks like a very good fixture for Palmer. So is it almost rushing it a little bit too much? And yes, you're going to get one step ahead for Blank Game at 26, but are you missing that absolute, what looks like a banker of a fixture in 24? It's really, really tricky because my initial instinct is, yes, it is one week too early, especially with Palmer, because I think he looks really good this week against Palace. But also you've only got so many transfers. And if you are looking to bring in someone like a Jotter at the moment, if you, don't sell Par if you don't sell Palmer or Richarlison this week to bring in Jota and you sell someone like Gordon instead, you're just putting yourself in a tricky position because Gordon actually has a fixture in 26, whereas obviously Palmer and Richarlison don't. So if you're not looking to sell your Spurs and Chelsea this week, 
if you're also got looking at having like three Liverpool, maybe you're looking at bringing in a Doughty and Adebayo. Like you are either saying to me, you're going to free hit in 26, which by the way, could definitely work for you. Or you're going to take a massive hit or you're just not aware of that upcoming blank. So yes, it probably does feel a little bit early to do it. But I also feel like it may be worth it to just get your team in a position where it has 11 players for blank game at 26. So me, myself at the moment, and again, I'll discuss my team at the end. I am looking at selling both Palmer and Porro this week. I feel like this again comes down to risk appetite. You are playing it very risky this week selling Palmer. It looks like a fixture that could be primed for a big return. But you're also going to get one transfer ahead. And if you value a transfer at four points, because it may well be a hit that you'd have to take if not, I'm kind of looking at it and thinking... Even if Palmer does return, I'm saving myself four points by removing him now rather than having to remove him in the future. The other thing on Palmer in particular, in comparison to Richarlison and Porro, is with Palmer, he not only blanks in 26, but he plays City in 25, and he also now is very likely to blank in 29. So it's almost a similar situation to Liverpool where it's not only the sort of immediate game that you need to think about, but he's also got two blanks coming up and also a very difficult fixture against City. So I feel like with Palmer in particular, he is a player that I'm not only happy selling soon, but also I'm pretty happy not owning him until around game week 30 or 31. I don't feel like I need Palmer in my team for game weeks 25 to game week 29. That's my opinion. I'm not saying that he won't return, but I just think given the fixtures and the blanks, he's not a player that I feel the need to have in my team. With Porro and Richarlison, it's a little bit more difficult because yes, Spurs blank in 26, but in and around that, Spurs have very, very good fixtures. The next two fixtures are really nice for Spurs, both at home. I think it's Brighton and then Wolves. And after that, the fixtures are pretty good. And the other thing with Spurs is they definitely play in blank game week 29. And it's a fixture against Fulham. So I kind of feel, and then I think it's actually Luton in 30. So with Spurs, outside of 26, I think you really want to own Spurs players. I can see pretty much everyone having, from 27 onwards, a triple, triple up on Spurs. Definitely for blank game week 29 and game week 30, I think most people will have three Spurs assets. So then you're thinking with Porro and in sp specifically Richarlison, you're probably going to want them back if you do sell them. So with Richarlison in particular, I am less keen on selling him. Porro, it's kind of like he's very expensive and he's not keeping clean sheets. So I kind of feel a little bit better about selling Porro. But Richarlison, I'm very hesitant to sell, especially given how well he's playing at the moment. So I've not really answered the question there yet. I don't think it's a great idea selling the Spurs and Chelsea assets this week. But if you are in a tricky position for 26 and you do want to get one transfer ahead, which is kind of the position I'm in, and you also are looking at bringing in Liverpool and losing assets, which again, I'm looking to do, I don't think you can get away with holding Palmer and Porro and bringing in more assets that blank in 26 unless you're planning on playing the free hit. So the answer is yeah. A little bit early, but I also think you're fine to do it as long as you accept the risk that you're taking by selling Palmer ahead of what looks like a very good fixture against Crystal Palace. So there was a question around captaincy and quite a few people wondering on captaincy for 24, but I really liked this question in particular. So I've just copied it word for word from Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. And this person said, Everton are fourth best for expected goals conceded in away games this season. I have fact-checked this on Fantasy Football Hub. It says fifth best, but very close to fourth. So let's say, for all intents and purposes, fourth or fifth best for expected goals conceded. And also, my girlfriend actually pointed this out to me the other day because I don't really look at home form and away form. It's probably somewhere where I'm lacking because some teams are much better away or much better at home. And Everton are really poor at home this season, but very good away from home. I do think that is in part the fixtures. I think they've had some more easy fixtures away and a lot of their more difficult fixtures have been at home that still being said there is definitely a trend where they tend to be better away from home maybe due to the way that they set up if you're an Everton fan let me know down below if you can see this with your own eyes as well so they are a really good defense away from home Haaland is obviously not back to full speed and I think we can all agree that I'm not saying he's been bad but he's definitely not quite there are we being lazy by giving little thought elsewhere for captaincy I don't think we're being lazy is the, is the truth I don't think it's laziness I think it's a couple of things I think this week in particular, we are all overstimulated and overloaded with decisions to make. There are so many things to think about. Game week 24 is a normal game week where we have the normal decisions to make, especially around benching decisions and also captaincy comes into that as well and normal transfers, right? That's already a lot to think about. But then you've got this Dublin 25. Do you bring in Liverpool assets now or next week? Do you have enough City assets? Do you want Luton assets? You've then got a blank in 26. You've got to start thinking about chip strategy as well. There is a hell of a lot on our minds this week. I mean, my mind is racing constantly thinking about FPL. Maybe it's because I'm a bit of a nerd, but still, I think in weeks like this, it's nice to just not think about some things. And when Haaland is back 
and he's now played close to 90 minutes and he's got a game at home, it does kind of feel like it's not laziness. It's just comfort. It's not having another thing to think about. And also a little bit of fear. We all know what Haaland can do. I sold Haaland on my Game Week 8 wildcard. I haven't owned Haaland apart from last week since Game Week 8. I know the fear that it is going into a Game Week without Haaland or even without captaining him. And I think that will be playing on people's mind. We know what the man can do. So I don't think it's laziness. I think it's safety in numbers. But I also think it's we've got so many other things to think about. A lot of us are just like, you know what, just default the captain to Haaland. Now, are there other good options? Absolutely. And am I considering it? Because I'm a content creator. I can't make the argument that I just can't be bothered to think about it. I absolutely am. But for me, it is only Liverpool assets. The only players that are making me tempted to go against Haaland for me this week are Liverpool. Because both Jota and Darwin have a very high ceiling. And it is the best fixture in the league at the moment for me. Brentford, uh, Burnley at home. Maybe Sheffield United at home. But I will go out there and say that I would expect Liverpool to score more goals than City this week. And therefore, is it worth considering Darwin and Jota? It definitely, definitely is. My, my concern with Darwin, I'll discuss them individually. My concern with Darwin is we don't know that he'll play 90. And I think Haaland will, unless they have absolutely battered Everton to this point. But I think Haaland's minutes are probably slightly better than Darwin's for this week. And Darwin is very inconsistent and difficult to predict. Right. So you are betting not only on his minutes, but you're betting on that he will turn up on the day and be the good version of Darwin. With Haaland, I know he misses chances. He missed a big chance, obviously, in game week 23, but he's so much more consistent. If you told me that Haaland gets three big chances and Darwin does, I wouldn't I would bet my house that Haaland tucks more of them away. But on his day, Darwin can as well. So I feel like it is, you need to be a, a real risk seeker to captain Darwin due to the way that he performs with Jota. I feel like it is a bit safer. I almost feel like Jota could be a slightly better captaincy option this week because I think in this week, Jota and Darwin's minutes are very, very similar. Jota is, in my opinion, a better finisher. He does get the extra point for a goal. He does get the extra point for a clean sheet. And you would have to say a clean sheet is very possible against Burnley. So I, I, I kind of do feel like in this specific situation, maybe Jota could be the better captaincy shout. But is Jota a good enough asset and captaincy shout to make me swing away from Haaland if we get confirmation Haaland starts? I'm less sure about that. And again, Man City are the early kickoff, so we should get confirmation that Haaland starts before the deadline. I just, I, I, I find it very difficult to back against Haaland when I own him. I've always said that I need significant evidence to back someone, not Haaland. If I own Haaland and he's got a home fixture... If it was Everton away, well, actually, that's a bad example because Everton are better away from home. But if it was another team away from home, we know Haaland isn't as good away from home. And we saw that against Brentford. But Haaland is a bit of a beast at home. And I, I kind of like the fixture for him, even though Everton have been good defensively away from home themselves. I feel like I've just rambled and said very little in that section. Basically, I don't think I'm fully convinced or at least convinced enough by either Darwin or Jota to captain them instead of Haaland. For me, Darwin's data and the amount of chances he gets would convince me enough that he's so inconsistent. And I don't think Jota, based on what we've seen recently, gets enough big chances and a high enough quantity of good chances to make me back against Haaland. So I think my armband's still going to be on Haaland. I don't think we're being lazy by not considering others. I just don't think there is a standout enough option for a lot of us on top of everything else we're thinking about to go against him. But I would love to know, is anyone considering captaining anyone outside of Haaland or maybe even the Liverpool assets? Are you considering someone crazy like an Adebayo or a Barkley? I would love to know down below in the comments. So there are a lot of people looking to wildcard this week because obviously it's, there's a lot of good fixtures this week. A lot of the teams that double in 25 have a good fixture this week, i.e. Luton, Liverpool and Man City all have home fixtures this week and good ones. We can also load up on enough players that can see us through blank game week 26 as well. And obviously we have a bit of information around blank game week 29. So this is definitely a week that you can wildcard. I just prefer game week 27 because I don't think you can get a brilliant team for 25, 26 and 29 wildcarding this week. Simply because a lot of the players that you might want for 29 maybe aren't as ideal now. And we also don't have all of the information around game week 29. In fact, we won't get the information around definitely which teams blank in 29 until the midweek between 26 and 27. So for me, the best and earliest time to wildcard is probably 27. But let's say you just need it this week. Let's say you've not got enough Liverpool assets. You've only got one city and your team's a bit of a mess. It's not a bad week to wildcard. This is roughly what I would go for. I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail, but... I'd have triple Liverpool and I'd have triple City. I think you have to go into the next two weeks with triple up on both of those. 
So Virgil van Dijk, Jota and Darwin for me is probably the best Liverpool triple up at the moment. And I think the best Man City triple up is Foden, De Bruyne, Haaland. I think I would go for triple City attack. So those six would be relatively locked in for me. If you want to differ slightly and go for a City defender, or if you want to go for Diaz rather than Van Dijk, that's absolutely fine. Or maybe a Trent. So those six would be locked. I also think I would have Kaminsky because I've spoken about the fact that as long as you can bench him in 26, which you can if you have Ariola, I think he's a keeper worth having. And I'd also have Alfie Doughty as well. I just think given the fixture this week and given the fixtures around 26, as long as you don't need him in 26, I think he's a good player to have. So I would have those two Luton assets. The other things that I would be thinking about is game week 26 and game week 29. Those are the two blank game weeks that we're going to struggle with. I think Aston Villa have a very good fixture in 26 and a very good fixture in 29. So immediately there, I've got Pau Torres and I've got Ollie Watkins and I would hold them through now from now until game week 29 at the very earliest. So I think two Villa is very, very nice. I've also got Emerson in there because he plays in 26 and he plays in 29. That could be any defender that plays in both weeks. But again, it's nice to have another defender that plays in both of the blank game weeks. I have Gabriel. I know Gabriel probably doesn't play in game week 29. But the fixtures between now and 29 for Arsenal are pretty fine. And I just don't think there are that many good defenders that play in 29 at the moment. So I feel like Gabriel is absolutely fine to still own. And I don't think you want to fixate too much on 29. There are a lot of points to be had in the meantime. And I think having an Arsenal defender is probably a good idea. So that explains the defense. And then the only other positions is those two midfielders. At the moment, I've got Huang and Richarlison. The reason I like Huang is he's got Sheffield United at home in 26 and you need to have all of your players in blank game at 26. That could be a Neto. It could be any number of players. But Huang does blank probably in 29. So he's not the perfect player to have. But again, there are points to be had in the meantime. And assuming that he is fit and available for 24, which I don't yet know at the time of me recording, I would like to have him. If not, you could replace him for Neto. You could even go for a Garnacho if you wanted to. I also have Richarlison in here. For a similar reason to what I've said, there are points to be had in the meantime. I like Richarlison for the next two. And I also think Richarlison is a very nice player to have after blank game at 26 as well. The keen-eyed people watching this will realize that I have quite a few people blanking in 26. So I currently have, I want to try and count them properly here, not including Kaminsky because I can play Ariola. I have Van Dijk, Jota, Darwin, Richarlison and Doughty. So I've got five. If you wildcard this week, you should be able to roll the transfer in 25, which means going into game week 26, you'll have two free transfers. Therefore, assuming there are no massive injury issues to the rest of my team, if I have five blanking and I've got two free transfers, I can sell two of them, leaving three players that blank on the bench. So you can still field 11 players in blank game week 26. So that would be my rough plan. It would probably be, I would keep Doughty, I'd keep Richarlison, and I would keep one of Jota or Darwin, and then I'd probably sell, like let's say, Darwin and Van Dijk. That's roughly what I would do in my wild card. You then obviously have Kaminsky and Doughty for game week 28. And I think this team has something like five or six players already confirmed as having fixtures in 29. And obviously you can add a few of those over the coming game week. So that's roughly what I'd go for on a wild card. Hopefully that helps some of you that are on a wild card this week. And if you are wildcarding, let me know down below in the comments. So guys, in this final section, I thought I would just take you through my team and show you what my current plan is. And it has been updated since my team selection video slightly. And the reason for that, believe it or not, you wouldn't think it'd make a massive difference, is we've had news that Charlie Taylor could be available as early as game week 24, which means he should be available by the time blank game week 26 comes around. He plays against Crystal Palace in 26, and he's also got a fixture against Brentford in 29. So if Charlie Taylor's back and fit, no, I'm not expecting a lot from Burnley. But at the very least, he has a fixture. And if Elise and Eze are still out at that point, you never know what he could get against Crystal Palace. So Charlie Taylor means that I have an extra player in 26, which means I can bring in an extra player that blanks in 26 and still field 11. So now, rather than looking at bringing in a City defender, I'm actually looking at bringing in Alfie Doughty. So my current plan as things stand, and again, I don't like losing Palmer this week at all. I think it's a good fixture, but I just want to get ahead and sort my team out in that way. So the, the plan at the moment is Palmer to, hello, Diogo. So Palmer to Jota, and obviously to afford that, you can see I've got 0 0.3 in the bank, so I can't do that easily. I have to downgrade, probably Poro makes the most sense, because again, he blanks in 26. I could do um, Ake, I could do Gvardiol, who I actually really like the look of, because I think he looks relatively nailed at the moment. But Doughty has got such a good fixture this week, he's got a double next week, and then obviously we've spoke about how good he is moving forward. And I can get away now with having him on the bench in 26, which we'll look at in a second. So my plan at the moment is actually to bring in Diogo Jota and Doughty. Great fixtures this week, double next week. 
So let me just make those transfers. And by the way, I'm using Fantasy Football Hub. If you want to trial it out, there is a link down below. You get a seven day free trial and 30% off if you use that link. So let me make those transfers. That would be for a minus four hit, by the way. I've only got one free transfer this week. Going through to 25 then, if I click the optimize button, this is the way the team would look, right? So I would have Doughty, Foden, Haaland, Darwin, Jota, and Trent. So six double game week players. And then I would have a benching headache between, do I play Watkins, Gordon, or Richarlison, or bench one of those players there? At the moment, Fantasy Football Hub suggests Watkins. I'd have to think about that in a little bit more detail. I could, by the way, potentially, rather than triple captain in 25, I could bench boost. It would require me to take a hit in 26 that I wouldn't necessarily want to take, or a bigger hit. But if I did sell Taylor, it could be looking like a good bench, right? Ariola against Forrest, Watkins against Fulham, Power against Fulham. Bring in another defender for Taylor, maybe even a double game week defender like an Ake or Gvardiol. It's starting to look like a very decent bench boost. But at the moment, the plan is triple captain Haaland in 25 and to roll the transfer. That would mean that going into 26, I would have two free transfers and 0.7 in the bank. Now, I obviously have five players blanking. I've got Darwin, Richarlison, Doughty, Diogo Jota, and Trent. But I've got two free transfers. So I think the plan at the moment for me is probably to either do Jota or Darwin to a player and then also sell Trent. So I think at the moment, I may be looking at something like Trent to Pinnock because he's got a fixture and it's not too bad in 26. And he's also then got a very good fixture in 29 against uh, Burnley. So pinnock him for Trent or something like that. And then selling one of Jota or Darwin. Let's say it's Jota. I actually quite like Bruno Fernandes. I know pe what people think about Bruno, but Fulham at home this week. And there you go. If Charlie Taylor is fit and available, I can get 11 players out in game week 26 for free without taking a hit, assuming there are no other issues in my team. If there are issues or Charlie Taylor isn't available, then yeah, it's going to be a minus four. And I'll probably have to remove either Taylor or Darwin, but I would have the money in the bank to pretty much do whatever I wanted. So making those transfers, and yes, by the way, that was a random cut because it wouldn't be an FPL Raptor video without a cut, but it's very noisy outside. I live in the middle of the city center, so I had to stop recording there while someone decided to start drilling outside. So for 26, we're looking in a really, really good position now. Like I said, we've got 11 players in 26 and six doublers in 25 with only a minus four hit required. For 27, the team's not looking fantastic. But I have a full team. Obviously, I've got decent players on the bench. Power Torres can come on. Darwin can come on. If I optimize the team, it's certainly not looking bad. I can bench one of Bruno or Foden and sell the other one for Son is probably the plan at the moment in 27, assuming that Son's fit and available. I think that'd be a really nice transfer. And then in 27, the team's looking good. I'm not going to just go through and through and through for every single game week. But in 28, I've then already got Doughty in place for his double game week. So actually, I'll just press optimize team again. So Doughty comes in. Uh, no. Go away. Doughty comes in for the double. I have a very, very decent team outside of that. I've got, obviously, I can do Darwin to Solanke in this week to get me a Bournemouth player. I can then also potentially do something like Haaland to Adebayo as well to give me another Luton player. You can see how the plan starts to come together. But 25 and 26 are definitely navigatable for me without a free hit and without taking many hits as well and without a wild card. So the plan for me is to just plod along. And also my team's looking pretty good as things stand for blank game at 29. So I think I'm just going to keep making transfers, keep taking the odd hit. And I'm currently looking at wildcarding after blank game at 29 and also free hitting after blank game at 29 as well. So that's the way my team looks. Current plan, just to recap, in game at 24 is now to do Jota and Doughty in for Palmer and Poro. And I'll cry myself to sleep when Palmer hauls. So guys, there you have it. That is my deadline decisions video. Hopefully it has been helpful for you looking at what I think about some of your key dilemmas this week. And if you did get any use out of today's video, please do smash that like button. And if you're still watching and you're not yet subscribed, obviously please do click that subscribe button. It massively helps me. Until next time, which will be the deadline stream on Saturday morning. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.